guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Janelle and I upload new videos every week. We are back with another makeup video and today I'm trying a bunch of new makeup that I picked up in PR and some new makeup that I purchased myself. We are using the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer live and in action today, which is really cool. And then I'm also trying out some OG makeup products that like I've never tried before. Estee Lauder Double Wear. Drugstore products on the eyes. There's a bunch of stuff in here. So if you want to see new makeup being put to the test, then definitely keep on watching. Let's just jump right into this video. Taking the Pacifica Glow Baby Lip Balm. I really like this. It leaves your lips super glossy. It smells like orange creamsicle and it also smells like a very specific orange medicine that I would take as a kid. And I literally would look forward to when I would get sick to take that medicine. I was twisted as that is. That's what this lip balm smells like. Now, so do I want to start with my brows? I like to comb the front hairs inward and then I just fan the rest out. Now, I'm really excited because I have a new primer that I want to try today. It's the Lancome Priming Serum. It claims to be a 24 hour hydrating solid smoothing primer. It has hyaluronic acid and niacinamide in it. This just sounds like a dream. I've never even heard of this. I don't know if this is new, but look at that packaging. That looks sternin. Full detailing on it. Yes, please. And then you just open it up. Wait, where's the product? Oh, <laughs> there's so many layers. And then you open it again. Then what's this top portion for? Um, The packaging is interesting. I don't know why this top flap is here, but we're gonna try out the primer. See, my only issue with primers like this is I love the e.l.f. Pearless Putty Primer so much that I'm like, is it worth spending the extra money? Like I've been tempted to try the Tatcha smoothing one, but I'm like my e.l.f. one is so good. Oh, that was a lot. I'm just going to massage it in with my fingers dewy and luminous, which I do like for smoothing primers because that's why I love the e.l.f. one so much. A lot of times in the past, smoothing primers would just be automatically mattifying. And it's like, I want to smooth the skin, but I also want to hydrate it. it. Smells good too. It's definitely heavily fragranced. Add some more and push it upward just to really smooth out the pores since the pores naturally face downward. Put a little more on my forehead. Let's add a little to the under eyes. Ooh, that looks nice under the eyes. That peachy tint kind of like cancels out a little bit of the darkness. Look at this side versus this side. All right, this long comb priming serum seems pretty good. My only thing though, is it better than the e.l.f. Pearless Putty? We don't know. We'll figure out once we finish up the rest of our makeup. This I already tried yesterday, but I got my hands on the new makeup by Mario. This is a Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. I got mine in the shade 160. It is a little light for my skin right now, but I think this will be perfect for me in the summertime. I tried it yesterday and I always feel like my first time trying a concealer, it's hard to like really gather my thoughts. It was cool because this claims to be a self-setting concealer and I did one side not set with powder and it actually held up throughout eight hours. So I wanna try it again today and I want you guys to see it on camera. So I'm actually gonna use this right now just to clean up underneath of my brows. I'm not gonna put it under my eyes just yet. I just find that this step really makes a difference in the makeup. See how light that is though? I don't wanna return it though cause I feel like this will be a great winter color for me. And since it's not a super drying concealer, I feel like I would like this in the winter time. I always like to lay it down with a brush and then blend it out with a beauty sponge. Just because I hate when the product is too bunched up on the eye area, I find that then it makes your eyeshadow and everything look crazy and super heavy. What kind of eye look are we thinking today? I kind of want to do like a brown, super smoky eye. I feel like I haven't done glam makeup in so long. So I recently got this Pacifica palette that has like the perfect color segueing into the fall time. And I'm really in the mood to just go smoky. Taking the shade Oat Milk, throwing that all over my eyelid. There is a good amount of kickback in this product, but that never bothers me as long as it blends out nice. Now taking the shade Caramel. Gonna use that as my initial transition. Okay, up close and personal. I really miss taking my time with just makeup videos and just sitting down and playing with it and not feeling like I need a rush to get every sentence out in like 0.3 seconds. That blended out really nice. I have my coffee here, but I don't wanna stain my Invisalign but I really need it cause I'm like falling asleep over here. That is like the one annoying thing with Invisalign is like, technically you're only supposed to be drinking water with it. And the lady putting them in even told me, she was like, okay, it's fine if you're a coffee drinker, just make sure to brush your teeth right after so the sugar doesn't stay in. But the annoying part is, is that it then leaves your teeth looking like really dingy cause the Invisalign 
stains and it just like sits in there. I really like to work it in this front area too to really sculpt out the eye. I so badly want to go through all of my brushes and just edit what I actually use. These bedellium tools ones I really like. I kind of want to get like another pack of these, get another pack for my freelance kit, call it a day and get rid of everything else. Taking the shade cinnamon. Oh, this is giving me all the fall vibes. Um, oh yeah, I never told you the name of this palette. This is called the Coco Nudes Palette by Pacifica. Starting in the center of my eye, working that in and then out. Pushing that toward the front of my brow and then I'm gonna go back in with that first brush to blend it and then bring it down. Really working it in this outer third, pushing that into the lower lash line, then back up and into the crease. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I want to start doing get ready with me's, but kind of giving them more of a podcasty vibe and just like chit chatting about like deep topics. They can't even be silly topics, but I just want to be able to connect with you guys better and just like, again, not feel rushed and just talk. So please let me know what topics you want me to talk about, different video ideas. I don't want to make content that you guys don't want to see or talk about things that you're not interested in. So let me know. I'm gonna go in with a darker color and then we'll build it up. I feel like it always looks dramatic and then I finish the look and then like the camera doesn't pick up anything. I've mentioned this before, but like makeup on camera, way different from makeup in real life. I feel like you always gotta go a little heavier cause the lights wash it out. So now I'm gonna take the shade Fudge. I'm gonna stick with the same brush and then I'll probably switch to a smaller brush. Starting at the lower lash line and then I'm gonna work it out, back in and then out again. Really taking my time blending this out. Again, going back to that first brush to soften the edges. Always keep that first brush on hand cause you're gonna wanna use it to blend in between steps. Taking a slightly smaller brush. This is a Morphe B206 brush. Taking that same shade and actually I need an even smaller brush. I'm gonna take this pencil brush and then I'll go back and forth between the pencil brush and this brush. Tapping that on my lash line. Also kind of working it up. Then going back to that smaller blending brush, tapping out the edges. I think for my next podcast to get ready with me, I wanna talk about anxiety because you guys, that was something I never, I don't think I knew what anxiety really was until like two years ago. It was crazy because I dealt with it so much for my whole life that I just thought that that was normal. And then I realized that like getting in flight or fight or flight modes for such mundane or like weird situations is not normal. And so I wanna touch on that a little bit and talk about my experience with that and how God has helped me with that. I noticed that's something that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people struggle with it differently. Some people have social anxiety. I also used to deal with that. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of want to share my experience on that because it really had a grip on my life for so long. I think that would be a really helpful uh, topic to talk about. Fear too, fear in general, fear and anxiety go hand in hand. But yeah, still let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Also, they don't have to be super deep. I also like lighthearted things. I don't take myself too serious. I'm very goofy, so it could be anything. I recently picked up this Hourglass Scattered Light Eyeshadow. It's in the shade Smoke. It's like a light bronzy rose gold color. It's done in. So we're gonna put that on our eyeballs. So for the brush that we are going to use, we're gonna take a MAC 2009 brush, work it in that shadow. And then I'll probably end up going in with my finger after laying it down with the brush, just to make it more intense. I find if I go in with my finger right away, I don't get the structure that I want on the eye. So that's why I like to use a brush first. I'm going to tap it on my eye. It's so forking pretty. This is gorgeous. Stop it right now. This is too pretty. Are you joking right now? It's such a unique color because it's like taupey, but also champagne-y. Like, I don't think I own a color like this, which says a lot because I have a crap ton of eyeshadows. We're gonna go back into the Pacifica palette, the shade Bittersweet. I'm gonna tap that on the lash line, starting on the outer third and lightly working my way in but only working it in about two thirds of the eye. Fan it out. As I get to the end, I'm lightly flicking and with a really light hand, I just start feathering it up to the crease. Ooh, see, but you gotta be careful so you don't leave blotches like I did. If that does happen, go back into that first blending brush. Like I said, always have that on deck to soften up the edges. 
And we're gonna try something different in a second. Of course, I watched the new Scott Barnes and Tati makeup tutorial, and he talks about doing a color wash with a shimmer. So I'm taking that same shade we put on our eyelid, and with that fluffy brush, ever so slightly dipping into it, lightest hand, and I'm going to run over everything. This is scary, because normally I only put shimmers on my lid, but we're gonna try it out and see if he knows what he's talking about. Obviously, he does. Ooh. I like what that did. It didn't leave chunks of glitter everywhere, but see how like much more seamless and smooth that looks versus this side? It gives it that less like cut crease look, which if that's what you like, I mean, that's obviously beautiful too, but I kind of like this. We gotta clean up this fallout. So to do that, I'm using an oldie but a goodie product that I used to love. Taking my Kiehl's Avocado Eye Treatment. Gonna take my Q-tip, work it in the product, and start swiping that under my eye to remove any fallout. Now we're gonna go in with some foundation. Estee Lauder recently sent me their Double Wear Foundation. And believe it or not, I only tried this foundation one time back in 2015 and I got a little sample size, but I haven't tried it recently and I honestly can barely remember my thoughts on it other than the fact that I didn't have the right color and it was too yellow on me. So we have these shades, three and one ivory beige and these shades, 3W2 Cashew. I think I'm gonna start with the 3N1 just because it looks a little bit new more neutral. Now the girls that I used to work with at the Mac store when I worked there in Tampa, they swore by this foundation. Like this is what they used all the time. Their makeup lasted all day. It always looked flawless. Let's see what I've been missing out on all these years. I know with this product, a little bit goes a long way. Oh, that's a great color for me. Ooh, yay. I was worried that this would be too orange. It honestly might be too light. I might mix them. I'm laying it in the center of my face and I'm just gonna pick up some extra with a beauty sponge and start pushing that into my skin. Okay, coverage. Dang, that match was perfect. What I've heard, I think this foundation does oxidize, so we'll see what it dries down. But even then, I feel like I could probably use a shade, maybe like one shade darker, so if it does oxidize, I think this might be like my most perfect matching foundation at the moment. Taking a little bit more foundation, taking on a bigger brush and working that along my neck and my ears. Well, I'm very impressed. I'm honestly mo mostly blown away by that color match. That's beautiful. Now we're gonna try the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer again. I'm so excited about this. Again, this was a little bit too light for me, so we'll see. I think once I do like my bronzer and everything, It'll all work out, but we shall see. So, actually, I'm gonna contour my nose first. I recently got the Merit Bronze Bomb. So I'm gonna like bronze slash contour with this and then we'll do the concealer. Buy some down my nose. And this is in the shade Cien or Seen. It's spelled S-E-I-N-E. -E. And then I'm going to work it on the back of my hand and then I find that that always works out so much better and it avoids the product from like looking patchy. Ooh, that actually looks really pretty with the double wear foundation because this has dewy finish. Color is really pretty too. It's definitely extremely buildable. a little bit around the mouth. That's actually a pretty lip color too. Now we can go in with the concealer. This is what the applicator looks like. I will say the applicator allows the product to glide on so smooth. A little bit under the eyes. See how smooth that just glides on? This is so light for me though. I'm so mad. Only thing is, is that I don't know what other colors to get because at the Sephora I was at, they had the shade um, 200 that wasn't in stock and they didn't have a tester. I don't know if that would have been my color because all the colors after that were like too dark or too yellow or too pink. Slightly tapping that out with my beauty sponge. One thing I noticed when I used this yesterday was that it offered really great coverage at first, but throughout the day, the product kind of faded. And as it faded, it became more of like a medium coverage. And then, like I mentioned earlier, this is also a self-setting concealer. So you do not need to use powder. And I set one side with powder yesterday and left the other side alone. And I found that the side that I set with powder, it ended up looking heavier. I'm back to that bronzing brush with no extra product. I'm just tapping on the edges just because this concealer is so freaking light. You know how this product probably would have looked really good 
is if I did the under face painting technique and I did the concealer and then put my foundation on top, that's when I feel like you can get away with a super bright concealer like this. I feel like they need to make makeup stores have a ton of natural sunlight to make shade matching so much easier because it's always so hard with the fluorescent lighting in the stores to tell what your actual shade is. I'm gonna add a little bit of my Rare Beauty bronzer in the shade of Energy, just cause it's a little bit deeper. I worked it on the back of my hand and now I'm working it in that same brush that we used for the first bronzer and just adding some more to the perimeter. Tapping over everything once again with my beauty sponge using a side with no product on it just to marry everything together. Nude Sticks also sent me some new blushes that I wanna try out. We have this like baby doll pink shade, which is like right up my alley and then some more neutral mauve shades. I think I'm gonna go with the more neutral shades today just because I feel like it would fit the vibes of like the smoky eye. So I feel like this color would be really pretty. This is the shade Rose Glow. Ooh, how should I do this? All right, I'm gonna work this on the back of my hand first. Oh my gosh, that color looks gorgeous. That also looks like it could be a really pretty lip color. I'm gonna pick it up with this MAC 109. This is the synthetic MAC 109. I'm gonna start by tapping it on my cheekbone up here and then working it down into the apple of my cheek and then back out and up. That color is beautiful. This isn't new, but I've been wanting to try this under my eyes. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Light Plus. And I wanna use this as like an initial set under my eyes before I bake or anything. Just make sure I have everything blended out and start tapping it under my eye. That looks really good. And then I think instead of setting all over, I'm just going to use my bronzer to set the contour and my powder blushes to set the cream blush. I don't have a new bronzer to try. So I'm gonna use my Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. I haven't used this bronzer in a while. This one's in the shade Medium. I like to really coat my brush on all sides when applying it. That way it goes on seamless and it doesn't look patchy at all since the brush is evenly coated. Then I just tap it on my forehead first, turn the brush around for the other side, and then I work it down. I picked up the Fawn Beauty blush palette that Katie Fawn recently launched. Look at these blush shades. They are absolutely gorgeous. I used this for the first time yesterday and the way that they melted into my skin. And then one of my friends that I work out with, she was like, what blush are you wearing? Like it looks gorgeous. She was like, it almost looks like it's a cream because the way these melt into the skin, but they're a powder formula, super buildable. Absolutely gorgeous. Also, if you don't know who Katie Fawn is, you need to check out her YouTube channel, TikTok. She's so talented, so ambitious, and she did not disappoint with this blush palette. What I did yesterday was I kind of like mixed them all together. So that's what I'm gonna do today. You guys are gonna see the way these just melt into the skin. It's unreal. Super seamless too. No demarcation, no blotchiness. And it has like the perfect glow to where you don't need to go in with a separate highlight, but it's not too glowy to where like it looks chunky or like choppy on the cheek. Revolution sent me this super matte fix under eye setting powder. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of scared to try it cause it looks kind of heavy, but we're gonna try it anyway. Before I apply it, I'm gonna apply this setting spray. This is a Sport Fix Lasting Hold Setting Spray. I'm gonna spray it and then go in with the powder. Ooh, the mist on that is really nice. Scared. Okay, I'm gonna tap it in here, bring it down the nose. Ooh, I should have waited a little longer for this to dry. Okay, yeah, never mind. Abort mission. This needs to dry more. I don't like the way it's like gripping to the skin. I mean, it looks good on camera, but in person, I feel like it's just a little too heavy. I'm gonna try applying it on this side with a brush. I mean, it definitely gives a really great look on camera, 
This would be great for camera makeup, but for in person, it's just a little too heavy for my liking. It kind of reminds me of like the Huda Beauty Powder that everybody loves. I like it when I want like extra coverage and I need like this kind of look, but for every day, I just find it to be a little bit too heavy for me. All right, Revolution also sent me these gorgeous highlighters. I have the shade Raise the Bar and then Just My Type. This is more of a golden tone. This is more of like a light champagne tone. So this color looks gorgeous. I think I'm gonna apply this one to my cheeks. But first, I'm gonna take a tiny bit with the fluffier brush and just graze it in here. Taking my setting spray again, soft mist. Now going into the highlighter. To be honest, I haven't been using face highlighter lately. I've just been opting for blushes like the one I use today that have that built-in glow to them. Ooh, that's pretty. It kind of is reminding me of the formula of my Give Beauty highlight that I recently bought from Sephora. That one has a very similar finish of like not being too beaming, just being a really pretty melted into your skin type of finish. But this one is like a fraction of the cost of that one, so. And honestly, the color is very similar to the one that I have. So this is my Give Beauty one. It does have a little bit more of like a rosy color to them, but the texture and like finish of them are very similar. See, like neither of them are gonna be overly chunky. Adding a little bit more blush because for whatever reason, my camera just wants to wash me the heck out. These are like the final steps that by this point, I just wanna finish my makeup, but these also can make a break a look <laughs> and they're essential. So I'm gonna take this shade Caramel, Caramel, however you wanna say it, picking it up with a small shader brush. I'm gonna work that along my lower lash line. Next, taking my Anastasia Brow Powder in the shade Dark Brown. It is used and abused, but I'm just gonna lightly fill in the sparse areas of my brow. My new favorite thing to do lately is either taking a navy blue liner or a forest green liner and tight lining my upper waterline or tight lining my entire waterline. It just makes the eyes pop so much, especially if you have brown eyes and it makes the whites of your eyes look so much brighter. So I'm taking this Lancome navy blue liner in the shade Minuit Illusion. I'm just really working that on my waterline. I actually decided to bring it a little more on my top lash line and now I'm just blending that out. All right, so now we need to figure out what we're gonna do for our lips. I do have this nude stick stick. It's supposed to be for your cheeks and lip, and it's in the shade Sunkissed. Let's see how this looks. Ooh, it like matches my lip exact. That actually could be a really pretty color. So because I like that, I'm actually gonna go in with a different lip liner. That way there's more depth. I'm gonna take, this is my new favorite lip liner at the moment, and it's the NYX Line Loud Lip Pencil in the shade Total Baller. It's so pretty, it's like the perfect warm chocolate brown. Kind of reminds me of MAC Quark. Oh, it's such a pretty color. Okay, I didn't mean to draw a whole other lip, but I did. I said we were doing full glam today, and here we are. Holy moly. Now using that lit stick to color everything in. I'm gonna warm the combo up with this MAC Glow Play Lip Balm in the shade Floral Coral. And I'm just gonna dab it to the center. Oh yeah, that looks pretty. Now we need to figure out what we're gonna do for lashes or not. I'm not gonna lie, I hate doing false lashes now. It ends up messing up my lashes for like three days because the glue stays in there. So I think I'm honestly gonna try to see, but I also haven't done a look this glam in a while. Let's see how it'll look without false lashes. I'm gonna curl my lashes with my Japanese lash curler. I really like the shape of this one. It's wide and it's, kind of flat so it fits the curvature of my eye a lot better. Lancome Sills Booster Lash Primer, the best lash primer ever. Oh my gosh, you can go back on my channel to like 2015 and you'll see me using this. I got hooked on it when I started working for Lancome in 2014. I kind of miss these full glam beads. I haven't done one of these in so long. I think I'm gonna mix these mascaras, the Ilia Fullest Volumizing Mascara and the Lancome Lashy Doll Mascara. I love the Lashy Doll for length and separation. And the Ilia one just really loads on volume and length. But I like that the Ilia one, even though it offers a ton of volume, it doesn't clump. All right, and this is the completed makeup look. I'm actually loving how this came out and how all the products work Bruh. Get it together, girl. 
I'm honestly so impressed with how everything worked out together. We got a mixture of drugstore high end and like everything is just flowing together seamlessly. I'm gonna do a really quick recap of what we used today and give you guys my thoughts. First off, this Lancome primer. Stunning, beautiful. I love the glow that it gave the skin. I love how it smoothed the skin. And I really feel like everything laid on top of it really nicely. It didn't like break up or pill or anything. Beautiful product. I'm excited to try it some more. And let me know if you guys want me to do like a side-by-side -side, all day wear test of this product and the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Cause I feel like that would be really interesting to see. <laughs> Next up, this Pacifica eyeshadow palette. Absolutely beautiful. The colors that you get in here are just going to be perfect for every day and are literally perfect for the fall time. Like this is fall in a palette. The way that they blended out super seamlessly and I was layering and building these shadows up and a lot of times when that happens, they can start to look patchy or like skip, but everything is just flowing super seamless. And you have like every matte and transition color that you need. If you're looking for a new eyeshadow palette that has everything you need nice and compact, Get this one. This Hourglass Eye Shimmer, so stunning. This was not my first time using it, but I highly recommend it. These just in general, thrown all over your eyelid, they're gorgeous. And I feel like the colors that they have are different than like the typical eyeshadow shades that I'm seeing everywhere. I was honestly shocked by how much I love the double wear. I don't know why I remember this being way more thicker, heavier and matte, but it wasn't. Like you saw the way I was able to slowly build it up. The shade match for me was perfect, the shade 2N1. Literally my perfect match, and it hasn't like oxidized like crazy. It looks beautiful. It doesn't feel super cakey or heavy on the skin either, and the coverage is just gorgeous. I'm, I think I'm gonna be grabbing for this some more, and I'm honestly surprised. Then this Merit bronzing stick on top of that was just like the perfect dynamic duo because it offered like a dewy, bronzy finish, but it wasn't like too glowy either. Melted into the skin beautifully. It didn't like lift the foundation or anything. And then this Nude Sticks blush in the shade Rose Glow. Beautiful. I've used other blush shades from them in the past that I've really enjoyed as well. And then the Fawn Beauty Blush Palette. Literally run out and get it ASAP. It is like, you're looking at my skin right now, how it's just super seamless, not patchy. There you go. Now you can see the colors a little bit more. So beautiful. These Revolution highlighters. I'm surprised honestly that everything I tried like worked out really well because this went onto the skin so beautifully. They also have one in this really pretty rose color I didn't get to try today. But if you're on the hunt for a new highlighter, I definitely recommend these because they're not patchy, they're buildable, and they look pretty on the eyes as well. I like this. Like I said, initially when I tried it, it looked heavy. Then when I went out into natural lighting, my skin looked really buttery smooth. I'll see how this wears throughout the day, see if it like bunches up or anything, but I mean, right now my skin looks really good. It's definitely one of those powders that you have to be careful with because it can build up and look heavy quick. So I gather that this is gonna be the type of powder that you would use sparingly and that would probably work best with a brush. The Mario concealer I'm really liking so far. It does really smooth out the skin. I can't wait to get it in my correct color so that I can really give you guys like my real feedback because I feel like the color has been throwing me off, but like the concealer itself is really pretty. I think that's everything. I'll leave everything that I tried linked down below. If there's any other makeup products that you want to see me try out, only consider subscribing if you want to see more content from me. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey.